Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Welcome back. And today we're going to be putting together this hard drive. Now I bought this quite a few years ago now. Um, well, basically because I was looking for a way to connect a SATA hard drive to my computer via USB. And um, I actually have a device that you use for an IDE hard drive that just plugs into the back of the drive and then it gives it a USB connection and it comes with a power supply. But I decided against getting one of those with the SATA connection on it because while they are handy, there are times when I need to have the hard drive mounted for a little while. Like, you know, if I'm doing data recovery or something like that, I don't necessarily just want a loose hard drive sitting on my desk. So it was nice being able to throw it in this case. Um, plus I've had, you know, situations where I'm glad I had it. It was actually bought locally at a little bit more money than I wanted to spend on it. I usually do my shopping online because, you know, it's a competitive world. I can find things a lot cheaper online, even with free shipping, than I can locally, which is kind of sad. Plus, the variety of items available to you are, are way different. You know, I can go to my local Best Buy and they have a paltry electronics section, honestly. They, they have some computer parts, but not exactly everything you're looking for. Whereas you can go on like a Tiger Direct or um, new egg and you know there's a plethora of parts you can get exactly what you're looking for and you can even get a good deal on it too so alas I, I have this unit now I bought this particular one because not only does it have the USB connection but also has eSATA which is just an external SATA connection that's obviously much faster than USB and USB 3.0 didn't exist when I bought this None of my computers have USB 3.0 anyway, um, so well, that's why I ended up with this. Now the biggest hard drive this can take is actually two terabytes, which I have sitting off to the side here. I've also made a video about that earlier from a mailbag. Um, but yeah, I've used this before. I had a, a one terabyte hard drive in it hooked up to this computer I'm using as a server. I've actually had computers that I only had room for one hard drive in, so this was a good solution for that. So this thing's been in my inventory for quite a while, but now it's going to get this 2 terabyte hard drive mounted into it. It's going to stay that way, and this will be the backup hard drive for my server. So without any delay, let's get this open. You can see we got the regular, so this is your eSATA connection. This is what's going to connect the computer to the hard drive. You have your standard power supply. Now this is outputting 5 volts at 2 amps and 12 volts at 2 amps, which is more than enough to run any hard drive I've ever seen. You get one of these little stands if you want to put the drive sideways in it, which I may or may not do. We have, of course, the USB 2.0 connection. We have your power plug to go from the power supply to the wall outlet. And this is obviously going to vary depending on what region you're in. And then we have the enclosure itself. Now, I like to keep everything in the box when I'm not using it because I don't want loose stuff getting everywhere. And let's just get this box out of the way. Now, this is actually really easy to deal with. We just need ourselves a screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver. And we'll take out this one screw at the bottom here. We're looking at the bottom of the drive, by the way. It's just this long screw. And we flip it over, and the top just slides and it comes off. Real easy. There's two screws on the inside here, which I'm not sure if you can see in the camera, but there's one right up here at the top and one down here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew those screws. We'll just flip this over, take them out, and you can see there are two, two little metal screws here. And then we have the inner piece, which slides forward and comes out. There's a wire up here which gets removed. This is the LED indicator. And then there's four screws in the bottom here that'll come out. And these are the screws for the hard drive itself. Now let's take a look at what they give us here. 
Now this is the inner base. Like I said, this has been used, so it's a little dusty in here, but there's a nice cooling fan underneath the hard drive here, which is nice. Plus we have our main circuit board here. It does have its own power switch in the back. This is your eSATA connection. This is your USB 2.0 connection, and then obviously this is your power connection. The way this works is the top of the case has a uh, vent in it. The air gets sucked in through the top, gets passed through the inside of the cavity here. It gets brought into this fan where it's exhausted out the back of the unit. And this fan's actually really quiet. This case is pretty nice. It does stay really cool. It's, uh, it's all plastic, but it has this aluminum top on it, an aluminum bottom, which is nice, but it sits outside the plastic. So it doesn't really like help cool or anything like that. It's just for, for visual. Obviously they have it on the bottom because you might have this thing mounted sideways like this. There's also a little blue LED indicator light down at the bottom here which shines downward. And then obviously inside there's the wire for that. And this is really easy. Now I'm going to take this one terabyte drive off to the side here. Or I'm sorry, two terabyte drive. With mine, what's mind boggling to me about these things is I've seen the same size hard drive for years now. It's gone from hundreds of, you know, megabytes to gigabytes to terabytes. I mean, I've seen these things go up to four terabytes now. It's the same size drive. It's just more platters and higher density data on them. But it's remarkable that they're able to squeeze so much information on these drives nowadays. So this thing just gets mounted um, on this rubber or more like a silicone base here which helps dampen the vibrations and uh, it just gets pushed up against these pins you can see if I back this out there's the pins and the jacks down here that's it flip it over there's the four holes here that these screws will mount into and these are nice because they have a really wide flange at the top of them. And I'm just going to sit these in, screw them in. And I do like that the silicone actually extends all the way through to the back side of these screws. Now these don't have to be, you know, torqued down or anything special like that. They just have to be snug tight. Just to keep this thing from rattling around inside the case. All right, and once they get put in, we just have to take the other side here, make sure this wire is inside this channel so it doesn't get pinched. We lower this in, and then it actually just slides back to lock it in, and that's it. Now we just have to take the other screws, get them in the position. Now this is a little tricky. Luckily, I got thin fig fingers to get in there, but they just go in. Oops, see, and drop one. This is supposed to be a magnetic head, but it's not really magnetized that well. And then I just hook up the LED indicator to the circuit board. Take the top, the same thing with that, it slides, vents go in the front. I take it back, vents go in the back. All right, yeah, so now the air comes over this way, gets brought in over the top of that drive, down the front of this unit, across the bottom, through the fan, out the back. And we flip it back over, and then this single screw just goes back in here. And that's it. And like I said, you could take this stand if you want, and set it sideways like that, and just, you know have it take up a little bit of space. I may do that up on the desk. Ultimately, I think I'm just gonna put it upside down, uh, you know, like this on its bottom and just leave it on top of the server. There is one other part to this kit that I don't have here in front of the camera, and that is the bracket that goes inside the computer that has the eSATA jack on the back of it and a regular uh, SATA connection on the other side of it. And that just sits in the computer and gives you that eSATA external jack that you can plug this into.
Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. I'm going to go ahead and throw this on the server and get it set up. And like I said, that's going to be my backup drive. I have two computers in this room. Both of them are being backed up by the server. I have a 250 gigabyte hard drive, I believe, in my wife's computer, which just has programs on it. She's not really, um, you know, she doesn't really take a lot of pictures or anything like that. So she doesn't have a whole lot of files on her computer. So that's more than enough space for her. My computer, however, has a 120 gigabyte SSD for all my programs and for Windows to run off of. And it also has a one terabyte drive that has all my, you know, documents, the videos that I've been shooting here for YouTube, stuff like that. The server has two hard drives in it. One of them is a 10,000 RPM, 300 gigabyte drive. And that's what Windows is, you know, the Windows Home Server is installed on. Um, that also holds the server folders, I guess you can call it, which is where it sets up the documents and pictures and movie folders and so on and so forth. Um, I also have a one terabyte hard drive. And what I did was I set the one terabyte hard drive up to be my backup drive. That's the drive in that computer that backs up my wife's computer and mine every night. And there is some room left over that I don't need. And the rest of that is partitioned off to be, you know, like a pictures file or what whatnot. Um, but things like, you know, programs or so on and so forth runs on the faster drive. And, you know, like I have my, uh, Minecraft server on there that's running on there. A um, couple things like that. But like I said... The server doesn't back up itself. It just simply backs up R2 computers. So whatever personal data that I have in this machine doesn't get backed up. And that's a little bit of a worry. Well, that's going to be fixed with this. I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. I'm going to get this hooked up because I'm just dying to see if it works. And, well, thanks for watching.